Hello guys, let us discuss this problem on course if known as kitchen timetable. It is in the practice or the beginner section. So first of all, I'll explain what the problem statement actually is. So basically they are giving us number of test cases, which is two. So this is the first test case and from here up to here, this is the second test case. So three means the length of the array or this is one array and this is the second array. So what does these two array include? The arrays include the time that we need for cooking and that is available for cooking. So this is the time that is available for cooking and basically I have to subtract it to get to know how much time is actually left. I will explain it to you all in a while. And this is the time that is required to cook. So this 0, 0, I am talking about the indexes or indices. This is the index corresponding to 1 and 1. This is the index corresponding to 2 and 2. So basically, we'll have to check for each and every corresponding index if the student is able to cook or no. So basically, this is the required time. This array contains the required time that the student needs. And this is the time that is available starting from the moment 0. So when we start from moment 0 up to moment 1, it means we have 1. So I think the time they have, I don't know what is time, let's call it minute, uh, units. So from 0 up to 1 units, uh, the time that is available is from 0 up to 1. That is 1 minus 0. So that is nothing but 1 unit time is available to cook. And the required time is 1. So yeah, this is possible. So yeah, the student is able to cook. So yes, this is 1 student that is successful then after that from the moment 1 up to the moment 10 that is 10 minus 1 that means 9 moments are left so um, among these 9 moments basically we have to check if we are able to cook or no so we need 10 units but we actually have just 9 so this is not possible so okay this is not successful then after this from the moment 10 up to the moment 15 that means 15 minus 10 which is nothing but 5 units are available and 3 units are required so if as you see 5 is greater than 3 that's why yes we are able to cook so this one was successful and this one is successful that is 2 so the answer should be 2 which is correctly mentioned over here and if you guys didn't understand this case test case let us discuss one more test case which is this one so see again 3 length is 3 so see starting from 0 up to 10 that means 10 units are available and the student requires 15 so obviously this is not possible so we'll exclude this case then from the moment 10 up to the moment 20 that means 20 minus 10 which is nothing but 10 units are left and among these 10 moment sorry units 5 are required so of course 5 is less than 10 so this is possible so yeah this one is possible so 1 is possible then afterwards from moment 20 to moment 30 that means 30 minus 20 is, what is nothing but 10 moments or 10 units you can say so among these 10 units 20 are required so of course 10 is less than 20 so this is again not possible so this case was not possible and this is also not possible but this one was possible so of course one should be the correct answer that means one student is able to do it so now if you see there is a bit of trick over here for this one for the first test case because we don't have anything to subtract. Basically, we are subtracting 0. So, I'll do one thing. I'll exclude this case because obviously you can see we are in an array. And to solve this problem, you will need some basic logic and the knowledge of for loops. So, or any loop, while loop, whatever loop. So, but I am going to exclude this 0th case because I'll obviously have to say 0. For I'll, I'll do one thing. I'll code it. So, I'm going to use Python for the same. You can use any language. Language is not important as soon as you know the logic. So, it's all easy. So first of all, let us take in the input. So first of all, n is the integer input. And I think they are taking in test cases and all. So let us do one thing. Let us try and solve for one test, test case as of now. So first of all, we are taking the available time. Which is nothing but we are going to have to take in a list in spaces on a single line. So to do that, we will have to take in a list of map. And to take in the input by spaces, we will have to use input.split. So I will define the map first. map, And again, we need to take in integer. So the input type is going to be integer. And we are going to use input.split function. Why? Because we want to take inputs in spaces. Okay, good. After that, we got the available time and we need the required time as well. So basically, this is the available time and this is the required time and this is the count of the array or the length of the array. So we all got these two input, these three inputs. We will take in the test case and all afterwards because we just want to see if our code is working or no actually. So first of all, as I told you all that I'm going to handle the first case, test case, that is the base case, that is the when the index is 0 because we'll have to subtract 0 from the moment because 0 is the starting moment. So let us do one thing. I'll actually check if 
Now in this case, I'll say if available time. So if available time of zero, that is at the starting point, if it is greater than or equal to, or let us say required time, or yeah, this is also fine. So is greater than equal to the required time of zero. So it means that we have oh it is less than so it means that available time is less than the required time so in this case it is not possible so let us do one thing let us take the con consider the case when, when it is possible so i'll say if required time is less than or equal to the available time it means that yes we are able to the student is able to cook so i'll do one thing i'll include a variable called count and i'll start it from zero and of course when it is possible then i'm going to increment it by one so count plus equals to one. That is that is this is nothing but the first test case, or not the test case actually, the base case when for the array when the index is zero. Now I'm going to use a for loop. So for that for loop, of course I'll have to start that for loop for one because I already included the test case for zero. So I'm going to say for any integer i in length or range actually. So range is going to be starting from one up to the length of this array. So length of Array, which is nothing but n actually, which we have taken as the input over here. So this looks fine. Afterwards, see, we have to check what is the time left. So time left is nothing but the difference between consecutive consecutive, uh, consecutive elements of the array. So which is nothing but the available time. So we'll have to subtract both of them. So I'll define one variable or there is no need to define this, but still why not? So time left is equal to the available time so available time at any particular instance i minus the one before it so because we are taking the consecutive difference right so array of i minus this array of i minus one so this is the time left now we have to check if time left is greater than or equal to the required time so if i'm going to say time left so if we have greater than or equal to time equal to time of the required time of i that means yes we are possible so again what we are going to do is simply increment count by one so count plus equals to one so okay this looks fine and let us do it let us try to print out count first and if this thing works it means yes this is always possible so i'll explain you all the logic again once more so let us do one thing let us check both the test cases so i'm going to check for this test case and the answer is okay two so i'm going to paste it hit under okay answer is so that seems to be correct i'll run it again and let us go back over here and check this test case as well so the output is one for this case so i'm going to paste it hit enter okay the answer is one so it seems to be fine so now i'm going to explain you all the code or the logic behind it so first of all we are taking in the input as n then we are taking the two arrays which is nothing but available time and the required time available time is the moments right so it starts from zero up to any particular index i so we're basically subtracting them which we are doing over here so we are taking considering a random variable called count which will obviously count the number of students who are possibly able to cook the dish so if uh, first of all i'm checking for the zeroth case right because we have to subtract it by zero so basically it is nothing but available time minus zero so because the moments are starting from zero that's why i'm saying available time of zero minus zero because the moments have started from zero which we are doing over here minus the available time of i minus one why I did not include zero over here is because if I start i from zero, it means that so actually yeah that's that's the reason. So if I start i from zero, it will be available available time of zero minus available time of zero minus one. That is minus one. So this will obviously go out of bounds or this will not out of bounds. This will be an error only. The answer will be obviously wrong. So that's why I'll have to include this case separately because I want to do i minus one. So zero minus one is not possible. So that's why I included this case over here. You can include zero. Obviously, this doesn't not make any sense. There's no need to include that. So if this is the case, so that means that if we have greater time than the required time, then yes, we are able to cook the dish. Then we are starting the loop from one up to the n. That is the length of that particular array. That means how many students are there. So we are taking this variable time left, or simply you can copy these things and paste it over here in instead of time left but this looks good and more cleaner so we are calculating the time left for every particular student so the time left of every particular student i is going to be available time that is the moment at that time minus the previous moment that's why that's what i explained you all before that is 20 minus 10 then 30 minus 10 and so on so that's why we are doing i minus i minus 1 that's what we are doing over here and now we are as we have the time left we'll obviously have to check if we are able to cook or not in that time 
So in that time left, if that time left is greater than or equal to the required time to cook the dish, then it means that yes, we are successful or the student is successful to cook the dish. So that's why we are incrementing the count and then we are printing the count. So this all seems to be easy. Now we just have to include a test case for that. So let us do anything. I am going to define a function for that. So, okay, let us call that function as whatever kitchen timetable what is the name of the problem if i'm not wrong okay and after this okay this is the function and now we just have to include the test case that is t is nothing but integer input of the number of test cases and after that we'll have to include a while loop so while t exists so if t is greater than zero that that's what it means so we'll call this function which is nothing but the kitchen timetable and don't forget to decrement t by one always because we are have to we have to include the test cases so let us do one thing let us run it finally and let us copy this output and uh, input sorry and the answer should be 2 and 1 so i'll paste the, the input and the answer that i got is 2 and 1 so this seems to be perfectly correct i'm going to copy these cases or the, i'm going to copy the code i'm going to submit it let's see what happens Okay, the answer seems to be correct. So that's all from my side. If you have any doubts, you can feel free to ask me in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get updates regarding more such interesting problems. That's all. Thank you.